Hi, I'm Alice and I'm the documentation assistant working on the Mortimer 100 project here at Hull and East Riding Museum and today I'm going to talk to you a bit about the, our Anglo-Saxon combs in our collection as part of the Spotlight on Medieval season. So the Mortimer collection is one of the founding collections of Hull and East Riding Museum and was amassed by the Victorian pioneering archaeologist John Robert Mortimer. His primary interest was in prehistoric burial mounds, but he found that the Anglo-Saxons were using these mounds thousands of years later for burying their dead as well. And they were buried with a variety of different objects, including things such as Anglo-Saxon combs. So most people tend to think of the Anglo-Saxons coming to Britain as warriors. However, today we're going to look at a slightly less aggressive object, as I mentioned, the comb. And we find that combs were found with both male and female burials, which shows that personal appearance and grooming was really important to the Anglo-Saxon people. The most common type and iconic type of comb found in the Anglo-Saxon period and in Anglo-Saxon England is the composite comb. So this means it's made up of multiple parts. And these can be either single-sided or double-sided. And we have examples of both of these types in the museum here at Hull and East Riding. So now we're going to take a closer look at one of our single-sided composite combs that we've got here in our collections. So here you can see it's a single-sided composite comb. So to create the comb, the bone or antler would have been initially sawn into rough outs. Um, then it would have been gradually cut and filed into the different composite elements of the comb. So you can see here the side plates the tooth plates and also the end plates at either side of the comb. Then after this was done, the, all the different elements would have been smoothed and polished and then decoration would have been sawn or cut into the side plates which would have been done using either a saw or a knife and there are a variety of different um, decorative schemes we see on these combs. So we see the typical ring and dot design that you can see on some of the combs in the gallery. You can also see uh, incised cross shapes, X-shaped crosses as well. So once the decoration had been applied onto the side plates, then the comb would have been constructed and put all together. So the tooth plates would have been inserted between the side plates and riveted into place with iron rivets, which you can see here. After this was done, then the teeth would have been sawn into the tooth plates. And we know that this was done after that they had been put in place, because as you can see on this comb, if you look very closely, you can see little notches in the side plates from where the teeth were sawn in. So as you can see, um, these objects were beautifully crafted and the Anglo-Saxons must have thought so too because they wanted to protect them and we know this because they also left behind comb cases which would have protected the teeth from damage but also they're equally beautifully designed and decorated um, as you can see in this image showing how aesthetically they would have been appreciated too. Such complexity um, in the creation of these objects suggests that they did have a symbolic purpose within Anglo-Saxon culture. And we know this from some of the historic records at the time, which suggests that long hair might have represented nobility or maybe had magical power. One of my favourite facts is that the Anglo-Saxon women were being drawn by the well-groomed Norsemen who had their hair combed daily. Of course, there was also the slightly less romantic element that combs would have also um, been very useful in the practical purpose of the removal and prevention of head lice too. But maybe the less said about that, the better. So hopefully this ins has inspired you to come and explore some of our Anglo-Saxon collections here at the museum and maybe discover more fascinating stories about Anglo-Saxon combs and bone working.